Hello again and welcome to my model evaluation tutorials. I'm still covering how to um, evaluate classifiers and this time we're going to be covering cumulative gains and lift charts. Now most of the material belongs to the uh, school of or department of computer science University of Regina in Canada and then some of it also belongs to Professor Said Sayed as before. Now the gains and lift charts they are a measure of the effectiveness of a classification model calculated as the ratio between the results obtained with and without the model so we want to do something for example a company wants to send out advertisements or advertisements and check the response the response rates of people contacted and this uh, is used to sort of check or measure the effectiveness of a classification model basically by you know using and not using the model for this uh, advertisement campaign in the example in the next slide things will be much clearer now they the they obviously they, these are sort of visual aids for just evaluating performance of classification models they both can consist of a lift curve and a baseline and what we want to do is uh, we want to if that was our baseline the red line here and the blue line was our curve then we want to increase the area between these two so we want this blue line here to be as far as possible from the I'm sorry the blue curve to be as far as possible from the red line now uh, unlike the confusion matrix, confusion matrix cal calculates, so, uh, sorry, evaluates models sort of on the whole population. The gain or gains or lift charts they evaluate the model, you know, the performance of the model in a proportion of the population, as we're going to see. And as I mentioned before, the greater the area between the lift curve and the baseline, the better the model. So we want this blue curve here to be as far as possible from the baseline from the red line let's take an example and see how this works now let's assume that we have a company and the company wants to do a mail marketing campaign it costs the company one dollar or one pound or one euro where, wherever you live for each item mailed so one dollar per item and the company they have information on 100,000 customers and we want to create a cumulative uh, gains and lift chart from the following data. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at this data and move forward. Now, for our overall response rate, let's assume that uh, we have no model other than the prediction of the, of, the, of the overall response rate. Then what we can do is we can predict the number of positive responses as a fraction of the total customers contacted. So, we want to predict the number of positive responses as a fraction of the total customers contacted. If you remember, the, for, remember from this slide, we have 100,000 customers. Let's assume that the response rate is to, is 20%. So if we contact 100,000 customers, then we get positive responses from 20,000 customers. So if all if all 100,000 customers, 100,000 customers are contacted, then we'll receive around. 20,000 positive responses. Positive responses means sort of for the company they accept their product and they are willing to buy it or something like that. Now let's uh, continue with our data now. For the prediction of uh, the response model, let's assume we have a model. A response model it pr predicts who will respond to a marketing campaign. So we have 100,000 customers, we have their information, we contact them and we want to, we have a model that predicts who will respond positively of course to a marketing campaign if we have a response model we can make sort of more detailed predictions so remember the idea here is to check uh, performance with and without the model ie you know doing random sending randomly uh, sending advertisement or advertisements randomly to people or using the model to predict the most likely ones who are going to respond positively so for example if we use the model if we use the response model to assign a score to all 100,000 customers uh, what we do is we predict the results of contacting only the top 10,000 and then the top 20,000 
and then the top 30,000 so if we do it like that this is how we build and this our these are our cut off points cut off points here is 10,000 so we start by contacting the top 10,000 customers and the cost will be $10,000 because it's $1 per customer and the you know for using the model we get sort of 6,000 uh, positive responses if we contact the top 20,000 customers then we get 10,000 positive responses if we contact the 30,000 top customers or the top 30,000 then we, res we receive 13,000 positive responses and so on and so forth so we continue this uh, until we reach 100,000 100, 100, customers where we get 20,000 positive responses remember these cutoff points and these intervals we increase by 10,000 every time now to build a cumulative uh, gains chart usually the y-axis shows the percentage of positive responses yeah so the y-axis shows the percentage of positive responses and how this is calculated is as the percentage of the total possible positive responses so the total we have was 20,000 yes the total was 20,000 now the x-axis shows the percentage of customers contacted which is a fraction of the 100,000 total customers or so if we go back to go back to the table um, the y-axis will be the percentage of this over 20,000 so the first point will be 6,000 over 20,000 which is about 0.3 so that's 30 percent and that's 50 percent and 13 over 20,000 you work that out until we reach 100 percent and for the customers so these are for the x-axis the customers is 10,000 over 100,000 that's 10 percent 20,000 over 100,000 that's 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent and so on and so forth if we go back to the curve you will realize that at 10 percent when if we contact the top 10 percent or the top 10,000 we get response uh, we get 6,000 responses 6,000 over 20,000 that's 30 percent so 10 percent first 10 percent we get 30 percent the uh, first or the top 20 percent we get 50 percent that means we get 10,000 responses and that's correct this is just using these definitions yes now if you look here the pink line now is our baseline by the way and the black line is our lift curve for the baseline uh, the idea here is if we contact any percentage of customers we get the same percentage of responses so if we get we contact the 10 percent the top 10 percent we get 10 percent responses we if we contact the 20 percent the top 20 percent we get 20 percent responses and so on and so forth and that's our baseline and as we said we want this black line black curve here to be as far as possible so to go that like that if possible now the lift curve what we do is using the predictions of the response model we calculate the percentage of positive responses for the percent of customers contacted and map these points to create a lift curve as we mentioned before uh, for the top 10 percent we have 6,000 and 6,000 on 20,000 is 30 percent that's why we get 30 percent for the top 20 uh, percent of the customers we have 10,000 responses so that's 10,000 over 20,000 that's 50 percent which is here and we continue the for the top 30 percent of the customers of the top 30,000 customers we get I remember 13,000 customers so 13 over 13,000 over 20,000 uh, that's between 60 and 70 percent and we continue like that to build the curve I hope that makes sense now for the lift chart it shows the actual lift and the way we do this is as follows to plot it we calculate the points on the lift curve by determining the ratio between the result predicted by our model and the result using no model so the result predicted by our model and the result using no model let's take an example if we contact 10 percent of the customers using no model we should get 10 percent of uh, sort of responders here yeah, or respondents 
and that is coming from here from our baseline if you remember from the last time so if you contact 10% we get 10% or if you remember here for the baseline if you contact X percent of customers then we will receive X percent, X percent of the total positive responses yes so if without with no model we contact 10% of customers we get 10% of respondents or positive respondents now if we use the model we get 30% if you remember if you remember if we use the model we get 30% the top 10% we get 30% the 30% is the result of 6000 over 20000 if you remember uh, a few minutes ago I was explaining this now if we see here for example for the first 10% yeah using the model the result will be or the value will be 30% using the model over 10% using the model which will be 3 i.e. using the model things will be 3 times better the percentage of responses or the revenue or the income or the uh, sort of money or earned by the company will be 3 times better I hope this makes sense so these, these values here on the uh, Y column, these are percentage for the X column, for the Y column, the lift is how much better uh, things are with the model. So for the baseline, they will say the same because we do 10%, we get 10%, so it's 1 to 1. Whereas here, if we use the model for the top 10%, things will be 3 times better than using the model. And these values here, 2.5, 2, 1.5, 1, and 0.5, these are how many times better. So for the 20, for the top 20 percent things will be 2.5 uh, times better when we use the model rather than the, rather than not using the model and campaigning or advertising randomly likewise for the for top 40 percent things are two times better when we use the model so to wrap up to analyze the charts the cumulative gains and lift charts are show the graphical representation of the advantage of using a predictive model to choose which customers to contact the lift chart shows how much more likely we are to receive responses than if we contact a random sample of customers you remember these you know two times better three times better and so on and so forth that's what that means for example by contacting only 10 percent of customers based on the predictive model we will reach three times as many respondents as if we use no model so things are three times better for the top 10 percent if you remember and you know for evaluating a predictive model um, we can assess the value of predictive model by using the model to score a set of customers and then contacting contacting them in this order so we score them we sort of sort things um, um, the in, in descending descending order and we target the highest values the actual response rates are recorded for each cutoff point so remember the, the interval uh, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 and so on and so forth such as the first 10%, the first 20% and so on and so forth so contacting the, temp the top 10% customers and then the top 22% customers and then the top 30% of customers and so on and so forth we create cumulative gains and lift charts using the actual response rates to see how much the predictive model would have helped in this situation so are things better with, with the model or without the model hopefully they will be with the model because that sh should be much better than doing things randomly the information can be used to determine whether we should use this model or one similar to it in the future so basically decide to use a model or not thanks very much for watching and I'm hoping to cover the ROC or the rock curve in my next video. Thanks very much again and see you next time.